I didn't decide to become a writer. It wasn't a conscious decision. I've always been a writer. My father is a writer, um, and I've seen him write every day since I was little. And I think I started writing almost every day since I was about five. It was just part of what I did and, um, and have always done. It's part of the way that I conceptualize the world and sort through the world and try to make sense of the people in it. And it's funny because when I got my book deal, everybody said, oh, you're young, you're 25, you got a book deal. But to me, you know, I've been writing every day since I was five, so it actually took me 20 years to get there. So it was actually a very slow process for me. Being a first-time author is totally awesome, <laughs> and it so surpasses um, the experience uh, that I even that I conceptualized. I mean, it really has been kind of a fairy tale of, of an experience. It's my life has changed really drastically, um, and. Uh, before I was writing full time, I was working three jobs, I was in school, I was exhausted, I was totally run down and I had to do my writing on the subway while kind of shielding my notebook from all the people sloshing their coffee all over it on their morning commute. Um, and now I get to travel and write and talk to teens and readers and it's just really, really fulfilling. I think that most people, probably in some very rare cases, people are either bad or good, but mostly everybody's some combination of the two. I mean, in high school, I was a nerd. Um, I was a very good student, but, you know, I was a little bit wild. I went to parties and I stayed out too late and broke curfew all the time. <laughs> so does that make me good or bad? I don't know. I think it's important to really get away from those distinctions. I mean, I think the most interesting thing about people is just how complex they are. What is next for me is I am working on a book called Delirium. It's my follow-up book to Before I Fall, but it's not related. It's a standalone. It's kind of a dystopian Romeo and Juliet story. Um, it takes place in an alternate history of the United States in which love has been declared a contagious disease, and they've also figured out how to cure it. Um, and it's big, and it's epic, and it's romantic, and hopefully you'll love it, because <laughs> um, I do. So...